let's start with the uh, the center of the flower and I'm using a chartreuse, chartreuse green gum paste and um, I get this color from mixing leaf green gel color and um, a little bit of golden yellow and so I'm just conditioning this dough so it's nice and soft and supple and a lot of people ask me how do you know if your gum paste is already conditioned or not and as you can see I'll tear up a little bit of a um, new gum paste here from my my plastic bag and as you can see this is an unconditioned dough and if you press it you'll see all the cracks that are forming on the side of it and that's when you know that your dough is still not conditioned so you'll see this is a conditioned dough and this is a, a not conditioned dough so I'll just continue continue to knead this and form it into a ball and the size of this ball is about third to the largest in my measuring cup you see and I love to use this measuring cup because you can you can tell exactly what size I am referring to as opposed to just saying oh it's the size of a hazelnut because hazelnuts have different sizes too so there you go so I just started with a, a ball of um, chartreuse green I'm going to take a number 26 floral wire and I just bent this into a hook with my needle nose plier and how you do it just basically take that the tip and then just bend it and there you go there you have it cut this off so I'm going to take my gum glue and I'm just going to brush a little bit of that gum glue on the tip or on the hook of that of that um, wire and I'm going to insert that on the bottom of my green dough and as you can see I've actually slightly flattened the the under side of it that way it doesn't roll all over the place and then I will take my drying foam and just basically let it dry for 24 to 48 hours so this one I've already dried and as you can see it's nice and, and um, hard already and then I'll take these and what these are really are just cornmeal I just took a little bit of cornmeal and I put it in a small plastic cup I took one of my um, this is the lime green petal dust and I mixed a little bit of it in there and, just, and so here you'll see I have two colors as well I have the one that I mixed with green and the black one is the same thing it's just cornmeal that I mix with a little bit of uh, Merlot purple uh, um, dust, petal dust, and a little bit of true black. So I can obtain that really um, nice black purplish color. And the reason why I use cornmeal is because I would like to have that fuzziness texture that anemones have. And um, by using this this um, ingredients in this. Um, this ingredients in the color of the petal dust that I use, I can obtain that effect that I wanted. So I take my um, my dried up ball center, I'll brush it with a little bit of gum glue. There you go. I'll wipe off the excess because I really just want it to be tacky, but I don't want it to be wet because I don't want my gum base to basically melt. And I'm going to dip that onto my cornmeal. And I can see all those spots that I did not put any glue on. I'm just going to continue to brush it and dipping it into my cornmeal. I'm dipping it in the green uh, colored cornmeal because I'm going to make the lighter version, the lighter purple anemone. And I'm just going to continue until I cover that whole ball with it. And there we go. Yeah, I think I got it. 
So again, I'm going to take my my drying foam and just place it there until it's nice and, and dry. So after that, while my ball center is drying, I'm going to take some seed stamens, some yellow seed stamens. This is actually available in black or yellow. So you could probably, or not black, but brown and yellow. So if you wanted to um, make black anemones or black center, black stamens, I would use, I would start with the brown ones. That way it's easier to just paint it with some gel color. I'm going to take my white. You can actually use green. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to use my white floral tape here. And for this time, for this instance, I don't really need to, to cut it in half. So I'm just going to use the whole width of the floral tape here. Just going to cut it. So the seed stamens always comes with a wire um, on the center. So I'm just going to unwrap that. Because I know that I'm going to use this whole bunch, and it always comes in two, um, two stamens per per wire, and of course I don't need that, so I'm just going to take this and basically wrap the center with white floral tape. Again, I have stretched that floral tape so that the adhesive is released. I guess that should be fine. So I wrapped it really, really tightly, nice and tight already. And then I will take my blade. This is just a regular, you know, box cutter blade. And I'm going to rub it a little bit with vegetable shortening so it's, it glides smoothly. And I will take the center where I wrap it with floral tape and just go back and forth to basically cut it cleanly. And I'm cutting it on my mat. I don't want to hurt it so I'm just cutting it really really gingerly making sure that I don't damage my vinyl mat because I need that to make my flowers. You can of course do this on top of a, a cutting board that way you don't worry about damaging your surface. There we go, we're almost there. There. Hey, I didn't cut my mat. Hallelujah. So then I get that whole bunch of stamen without it going all over the place. And that's how I do it. So now I take that stamen and basically spread that so that I have a hole right in the middle where I can place my green ball in. Make sure that it's like distributed evenly. So now I take that green ball that I have um, dried earlier and I'm going to insert it right in the middle of my stamen. You see? Now you have the center of the anemone without the mess. Isn't that wonderful? So I basically just take my green floral wire and then start wrapping it so that it's secured onto my center. And some of the cornmeal is going to like come off but that's okay there's plenty of them of them in there that you don't even need to worry about it so 
So that is your finished center. So you just, you know, let it set it aside until we're ready to use it later on. So now I'm taking my light purple gum paste. And we're going to make some petals. So if you're using the Petal Crafts brand of cutters, you'll receive like two petals, two petal cutters and a veiner. If you are using um, another type of uh, cutter, you can use um, one that is a little bit similar to these shapes that I have here. And uh, an all-purpose petal veiner will, will actually do. You can use those too. Okay, so I'm just conditioning my purple gum paste. So I'm going to roll this in a way that this part is thicker than the rest. That way I have a space for my stem wire to get in. So I'm going to take my veiner. Again, you can use any kind of um, all-purpose petal veiner. If you're using the petal cracks kind, then you can just um, use the the veiner that comes with a set. And I'm going to use the smaller smaller um, petal cutter. So how I cut my petal, I just basically press it down and shake it, shake it back and forth, so you get a clean cut of petal. So I'm going to take this and get my number 26 floral wire, dip it in some glue, wipe off the excess, always wipe off the excess of the glue because you don't want any extra moisture into your gum paste because it will just eat through it. So I am taking my, my um, petal and I am holding it with my forefinger and my thumb. That way, when I insert my wire into it, I can feel where it's going. I can tell that it's not going through either side, the back or the front of my petal. Alrighty. Then I will take my foam petal pad and my ball tool. So I'm going to start from the base of the petal and just basically take my ball tool and I'm holding it like a pen as you see. I'm holding it like a pen and most majority of my ball tool is actually on the petal pad because if I put it right here all that veining is going to get erased. So I don't want that to happen so I'll just take this and basically and basically run it through the side of the petal and while you're running that ball tool onto your petal it, you actually give movement to it as well which is what we need so it looks like a petal. I'll take my um, egg crate drying former it's made of foam so it, it, it supports my petal and I will just dry it right there So it's 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 like a, a cup, but it's not you know too deep because we don't want it. We just want it to have that natural natural uh, curve to the petal. So again, I'm just gonna show you another one using the larger petal, and it's just basically the same exact procedure as I did with a smaller one. And I'm just rolling this again so that the um, the base or one side of my gum paste is thicker than the rest. I'm taking my petal veiner. Again, you can use a, an all-purpose one. And I'm taking the larger petal cutter. I'm pressing it down and shaking it back and forth so that I get that clean cut. So I'm cutting another 26 inch gauge wire or 26 gauge wire. Brushing it with a little bit of gum glue. 
wipe off the excess, don't forget to wipe off the excess because otherwise it will just slide off. And this time, as you can see, I don't even need to use a hook onto the, uh, the uh, wire because um, I don't need it. Just make sure that when you insert it, and I'll show you here, when you insert it onto your petal, make sure that it's between your forefinger and your thumb so that you can feel where the wire is going and it's actually easier if you're pointing it down or a little bit at an angle that way it's easier to insert the uh, the wire on and then after you insert the wire make sure that you pinch the bottom of your of your petal that way you know that it stay it will stay there and it will not come off after the gum paste is dry so again i'm taking this and placing it on my pedal foam pad, taking my ball tool again, and then just basically, it's it's almost like drawing, kind of like you're drawing the, the, the sides of the pedal. So you don't really need to get into the center of the pedal to kind of like, you know, um, give it shape. You just really need to touch the sides of it really because what you're doing is just basically making it thin to give it that illusion that it's a thin petal but really the side is or the center of the petal is is uh, thicker than the rest okay and as you can see again the majority of my bottle is on the petal foam pad and I'm just basically trying to outline that petal that way I thin the edges but not erase the veining on the center so I'll take that petal, and again I'll put it onto my drying foam, egg crate foam, and I'll just give that, give it that, that curved shape that you need. So I'll take that dried up petals, there you go, and some Windsor, Windsor purple. I'm going to use my palette dust just because it's a lot easier and you know that now I love these petal dust because it's a lot less messy I don't even really need to have you know a paper except to catch any you know um, excess dust that may fall so it doesn't get all over the place so I'm just basically dusting the base. So when you're dusting, I like to use a flat brush. That way I can scrape from wherever I wanted it to to be darker. Like for this instance, I wanted the base to be darker, so I just basically scrape that ever so gingerly. And I have seen a lot of my students kind of like when they see me you know, dust the petals, it basically forms a line. Like they go darker from this from this point and then brush it and then they form like a line. And you don't really want to have that. You want it to be dark and then gradually getting lighter towards the tip of the petal. So there we go. And per flower I suggest that we make about Seven, eight of the smaller petal and about six of the larger petal. So here I have the ones that I've already dried up and dusted. So I'm going to take that center that I did earlier. And wasn't that fun to make that center? That was really fun. I thought it was. And I'll take one petal attach that petal with a half width floral tape. I'm going to go stretch it again. Okay, so um, before I put these onto the center, and as you can see, I really can't put it like that because it's like right where the stamen is. I need to bend it a little bit at an angle. And you don't bend the dried up petals on the tip, you don't push the gum paste, you push the wire. So I would hold the base of that petal 
and basically push the wire backwards at an angle. That way I don't risk breaking the pedal. Okay. And I would put that right on the base of my of my center. So they're the same. There we go. So I'll take half a width of my floral tape. Again, that's already been stretched. I will put my forefinger right on the tip so that it's nice and secure and wrap that petal twice. So it's secure in there and that I don't need to um, hold it while I am wrapping up all the rest of the petals. Here we go. And again, you see, I don't have any um, wire that is showing. I wrap it right on the base of it where the gum paste petal starts. That way, I don't have any wire sticking out because you don't really want to see that wire. You want it to hide it as much as you can. So you can use a um, minimum of eight small petals per flower. You can go up to 10 or 12 depending on how big a flower you want it to do or how tight the petals you wanted it to have. This is just like a standard that I'm trying to do here. But of course if you wanted it to have more petals you can absolutely go crazy and add more petals to it. So I have about eight petals there, or even more. I think I put nine, but that's okay. So make sure it's like nice and um, even, evenly distributed. So I'm going to take the larger petals and again I'm going to bend those wires and as you can see, I'm bending the wire. I'm holding the petal and bending the wire. So I'm just going to put that petal wherever it's needed. And normally I put the petals, the succeeding petals, in between the first ones that I already put in. There we go. So cover as much wire as you can for each petal that you add. So I added three already of the larger ones. Make sure that while you're adding the petal you're also looking on top of your flower making sure that you know where the next petal needs to be in, so it's nice and, and even. Okay. So once you're uh, done adding all of your petals, you just go ahead and get that floral tape and put it like on a 45 degree angle and then just twirl that stem so that you wrap all the stem all the way to the end. That way you end up with just one stem instead of all these little tiny um, wires that you have from all the individual petals that you put on there. This way it looks neater too. And there we go. And that is your finished anemone.